Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith! Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. Hey folks. So, the scripture at the beginning of the video speaks all. In most of our situations, you know, things happen and then you start to worry about what's going to happen about that tomorrow or the next day or the next day. Well, we're told not to worry about the tomorrow. For a lot of people, I understand, it's easier said than done. I've heard that said a lot. I think I've even used that line once or twice. But you come to realize that then at the end of the day, the good Lord's always got you back. Even though it's in a tight situation that seems impossible, He's there. I know a few people have been messaging me, asking me the situation on my wife's car, how, well, we thought that the TCM went bad in the transmission. I had the code ran, the check engine light, everything. And I looked it up, and it was pointing to that part. That part. And that part was supposed to be under extended warranty through Ford. Well, got in it earlier, and I moved it. And I noticed that the check engine light was off. So I said, you know what? I want to just drive it around the block and see what it does. And it did fine. So I said, okay, let's just take it to the, the dealership and see if they'll go ahead and put it in line for this part. Well, we get it up there, and they checked out the code. But you have it. It's not that part. It's something else. Way more expensive. And then I happen to say in my mind, what are we going to do? I'm worrying about tomorrow. It shouldn't be. The car's running fine right now. I'm worrying about right now. And not even, it's not even worry. So I looked at my wife. After that popped in my mind, what are we going to do? I said, you know what? Let's just drive it until they won't drive no more. And then we'll worry about it. And I had someone tell me, well, why, why don't you just sell your truck? I mean, it's a single cab truck. Just sell your truck. Well, I, my response to that would be, We've already been down that road, and that's why we're in the situation we're in with all these cars messing up with her. We had, in 2016, uh, a, a 2001 Forerunner, Toyota Forerunner. There was nothing wrong with it. She just didn't like the gas mileage. So I said, okay, well, I'll see if I can't trade it for something. And I did. I traded it for something, and it just went downhill from there. Now... This truck that I have, I got it in 2015, February of 2015, and it has outlasted every single vehicle that my wife has gotten. It has outlasted all of my friends' vehicles. And a matter of fact, 
It's even outlasted my mom's car that she bought brand new in 2016. And this truck is 17 years old. So I've learned from that mistake of getting rid of something that works and then winding up having another project that you up to your eyeballs in. It does seem like a lot of us are paddling in the same boat full of holes. I may be the one throwing the water out with a bucket, you know. But keep looking up. It seems like it's rough right now. But the good Lord's coming. And a lot of experiences in the past, worry sets in. And then at the end of it, you look back and say, why? Why did I even worry? There's no point. We are so close to the coming of the Lord. There's really no point to worry about anything. Keep looking up, church. Jesus is coming soon. Romans 10, 9 through 13. I love all of you and God bless. And they say if we'll only avoid any direct confrontation with the enemy, he'll forget his evil ways and learn to love us.